Today we're going to be doing some figure drawing with fine charcoal and a kneaded eraser. The nice thing about these materials is that they work really well together and you'll be able to get some nice clean marks additively and reductively. We'll be doing a variety of different poses today, starting first with just 30 second gesture sketches. A gesture sketch is a drawing that focuses on capturing the movement of the figure rather than the exact proportions or muscular details. You can almost think of it as a drawing that starts to capture the skeleton or where the weight and movement is being distributed within the figure. For this drawing, I've drawn a line for the top of the head and the bottom of the feet, as well as the center line that's kind of grounding our figure in space. And now I'm going through and pulling out some key diagonals and curves within the figure. The diagonal of the hips, the curve from one shoulder to the foot that's bearing the weight, the diagonal of the shoulders, all of these lines I'm pulling out. Gesture drawings are normally only 30 seconds to a minute, so I'm already moving on to my next gesture sketch. I'm starting off this gesture sketch in same way with the top, bottom, and center line, and then starting to pull out some of those diagonals. I'm noticing that one of the strongest curves is the curve of his back into his weight-bearing foot, so that's one of the major curves that I'm getting in. I'll capture a few other key lines, but with just 30 seconds, it's not much time to capture more than that before I have to move on to the next drawing. With this gesture sketch, I'm noticing that a lot of the motion is coming from the curve of the front of the rib cage, as well as the opposite curve of hip to weight-bearing foot. Another key angle in this pose is the angle of the hips. Her back leg and arms also seem like a really key part of the expressiveness of this pose, so I'll try to make sure that I get some marks in for those as well. The result for all of these drawings is something that is very abstract and almost skeletal, but hopefully very expressive. We're going to move on to some longer poses, but before we do, I want to take a moment to talk about the proportions of the figure. I have here a center line that I've divided into eight equal segments. Each segment is the length of one head. We can use the head as a unit of measurement to identify some key proportions within the body. The first head measurement obviously contains the head. Two heads down is the middle of the chest. Three heads is the navel. Four is the bottom of the pelvis. We're going to skip five for a minute. Six is the bottom of the knees, seven is the ankles, and seven and a half is the bottom of the feet. We can then disregard the eighth head. Um, I just like starting with eight because it is much easier to divide a line into eight segments than to divide a line into seven and a half segments. Just as we approach the facial features as geometric shapes, we can also approach the body as a series of geometric shapes. I often like to break things down into trapezoids or cube-like structures because this is helpful down the line in thinking about the body in perspective. So the rib cage we can think about as a trapezoid that is typically wider at the shoulders and narrower at the navel. The hips is again a trapezoid but in the opposite direction. Typically, the hips are wider at the base and narrower close to the navel. We can also think of the knees as trapezoids, representing the kneecaps, and even the feet we can think about as trapezoids as well. Now that we have the basic geometric structure for the figure laid out, I want to take a moment and quickly mention some proportions in the arms. In general, the elbows sit right about at the navel, or in line with that third head mark, and the wrists sit a little bit below that fourth head mark, or below the bottom of the hips. 
When we talked about portraits, we thought about the head as a series of interlocking spheres that could fit within a cube. This cube allowed us to view the head in perspective and respond accordingly to how we were drawing the facial features. Similarly, we can use this cube-like strategy to approach the other major features of the body, namely the rib cage, the hips, even the limbs. We can think of everything as uh, objects that fit within a cube. Starting to understand the body as these simple geometric structures with front, back, side planes, top and bottom planes can help us start to construct a figure that makes sense spatially and also has a value structure and pattern of light and shadow areas that makes sense as well. This will be especially applicable in the longer poses that we have coming up. For this five minute pose, I'm gonna start out in much the same way that I did for the gesture drawings, by drawing a line for the top and bottom of my figure and a center line or my line of gravity. I'm also gonna make a mark in the center that's about where the hips will be, as well as a mark for the second and sixth head to just give me some of those proportional guidelines as I start getting in the gestures. I may also actually hold my charcoal up to the figure to start to visually identify the angles of the shoulders and the hips and get those angles correct on my page. Once I have the gesture in, I'll start turning the rib cage, the hips, the limbs into those geometric forms, into those cubes in perspective. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the figure and I'm starting to think about, okay, if I'm looking at the rib cage, am I seeing the entire front plane of the rib cage, part of the front and part of the side, and starting to use that to imagine the rib cage within a cube and doing the same thing with the hips and the legs. I'm really using these geometric shapes to build on that dynamic gestural movement that I started with. If I have time, I may also start to capture some of the exterior lines of the figure and soften these geometric cubes into more human-like forms that suggest muscle. With a longer pose of 15 or more minutes, I'm going to build on the gestural and geometric structure of the figure by using light and shadow to really pull out the form. For this longer pose, I'm going to start with a paper that has been toned, meaning that it is covered with a light layer of charcoal. Into this charcoal layer, I am going to draw my center line as well as the top and bottom of my figure and find the middle of the figure where my hips are going to be. And I'm going to start in a really similar way to the past two drawings, trying to capture some of the gesture of the figure, some of those key angles of the hips and the shoulders, as well as some of the movement of the arms and legs. Since this is a longer pose, I'm going to try and capture as much information as I can with my gesture drawing. What I'm doing now is actually capturing the angle between the right and left knee and the right and left ankle. This will really help me further down the line as I'm trying to deal with the foreshortened perspective of that back leg. I'm also going to start thinking about those structural geometric shapes of the figure, especially those key areas of the rib cage and the hips and the head. Once I have that initial gesture to a place that I'm happy with, I'm going to start by actually using my eraser to pull out the highlights that I'm seeing in this figure. I'm really simplifying the figure into as big and broad of shapes as I can to start. So I'm simplifying all of these highlights and shadow areas on the top and side of his chest into just one big shape that also is blending with the highlight on the side of his arm, as well as the highlight on the top of his thigh. At this stage in the process, I'm doing a lot of squinting, really trying to simplify the figure down 
into some big, broad shapes. I don't want to get too detailed too quick, and I'm keeping everything still pretty geometric and following those kind of cube-like planes that I set up earlier in my drawing. Once I have most of my broad light shapes in, I'm going to go back in with my charcoal and start adding in some of my shadow areas. Again, I'm doing a lot of squinting, trying to keep my shapes as simple as possible. At this point, I really only have three values on the page. My light, my shadow, and my background. Most of the right-hand side of this figure is in shadow. There's variation within that shadow, but for now, I'm keeping it relatively within the same value range. I may go through and start pulling out some of these exterior lines, especially in this back leg. I know this is going to be a challenging area for me because that bottom half of the leg is foreshortened, meaning that it's going back into space in such a way that perspective is making it look shorter than it actually is. Since this right hand side is mostly in shadow, I may go through with my eraser and pull out some areas to heighten the contrast between the shadow of the figure and the value of the background. I'm paying some attention now to this left hand weight bearing foot of the figure because I know it's going to be really essential in capturing both the movement of the figure as he lunges forward and in grounding the figure in space since this is the weight bearing foot. Now that I've gone through and broadly placed in those highlights and shadows, I'm going to get more and more specific about the values and the shapes that I'm placing on the page. I'll go back and forth between my eraser and my charcoal, adding and removing different values, constantly refining these really broad geometric shapes that I've put on the page, slowly softening them and making them a little bit more human. Even with 15, 20, even 30 minutes on this drawing, I might not end up with something that is super realistic, but I can aim to create a drawing that is less geometric and more reminiscent of skin and muscle. By focusing on light and shadow in this drawing, I'm able to create an impression of the figure that also has a sense of spatial depth. 